Welcome to Breaking Space's weekly space traffic report, where we break down the space traffic of the week and see what's coming up next week in spaceflight. We started off the week with the Starlink Group 17-3 mission on board a Falcon 9. Liftoff took place on July 19th at 3.53 UTC from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base. The rocket was carrying 24 Starlink V2 mini satellites into sun-synchronous orbit. The mission was the second operational launch of Starlink V2 mini satellites into a polar orbit and should allow increased coverage and speeds to Starlink users in higher latitudes. The first stage booster for this mission, B-1082, was flying for a 14 time, and it successfully landed on SpaceX's drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. Going to the east coast of the United States, another Falcon 9 lifted off with more internet satellites, but it wasn't Starlink this time. Falcon 9 took to the skies on July 22nd at 2112 UTC from Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida, carrying two O3B M-Power satellites into medium Earth orbit. The O3B M-Power satellites are internet satellites built by Boeing and operated by Luxembourg-based SES. These are the second generation of the company's O3B constellation, having previously launched 20 of these first-generation satellites between 2013 and 2019. These were the ninth and 10th of these improved O3B satellites, which started deployment back in 2022. The constellation was originally supposed to have 11 of these, and this mission was in fact supposed to have carried the 9th, 10th, and 11th satellites. However, issues with the electrical systems on the first four satellites forced SES to order another extra pair of these satellites from Boeing. So that meant changing the launch plans and only launching two on this mission, just like on the previous four. The next mission, scheduled for 2026, should hopefully be the last and will be carrying the last three satellites needed for SES to complete the constellation. It'll be interesting to see if, after this is completed, the company will choose a low Earth orbit constellation as its successor, or whether they'll stick with a constellation in medium Earth orbit. For this mission, SpaceX used booster B-1090, which was flying for a sixth time. Despite being young, the booster successfully made it back to Earth, landing on SpaceX's drone ship Just Read the Instructions. After that, we headed back to Vandenberg for the third and final Falcon 9 launch of the week. Liftoff took place on July 23rd at 1813 UTC from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Falcon 9 was carrying NASA's Tracers mission along with eight other rideshares into sun-synchronous orbit. Tracers, which stands for Tandem Reconnection and Cusp Electrodynamics Reconnaissance Satellites, are actually two satellites in one single mission. The satellites are meant to orbit one after the other in the same orbit around Earth, measuring magnetic reconnection. Magnetic reconnection is a physical process that occurs on Earth's own magnetic field when the solar wind interacts with it, modifying its shape and causing magnetic lines to disconnect and reconnect. Large flares, for example, can trigger a discharge of charged particles down to Earth's atmosphere, creating not just beautiful auroras, but also issues with our own electrical systems here on the ground. Thanks to their near-polar orbit, the two spacecraft will be able to measure these discharges in tandem as they travel close to the Earth's magnetic poles. The mission is led by David Miles from the University of Iowa, which was also the home university of famed physicist James Van Allen. He's the one that the Van Allen belts are named after. Alongside tracers were also eight other rideshares, some of them also by NASA. One of them, called REAL, which stands for Realistic Electron Atmospheric Loss, is related very closely to tracers. REAL is set to study the loss of particles from the Van Allen radiation belts as it's able to detect protons and electrons being discharged into our atmosphere. Another payload called BARD was built by York Space Systems and carries the Polylingual Experimental Terminal, or PEXT. The terminal is designed to enable interoperability between government and commercial satellite relay networks as part of NASA's efforts to move to commercial communication systems. The other payloads on board were NovaWorks Athena, Tyvax Lide spacecraft, and four spacecraft as part of the Skycraft 4 constellation. The mission was originally scheduled to launch on July 22nd, but it had to be aborted less than a minute from liftoff. The reason had to do with a power outage in Santa Barbara, which disrupted telecommunications at the FAA's Los Angeles Air Route Traffic Control Center, which manages air traffic control over the Pacific Ocean. This forced the FAA to postpone the launch in order to ensure the safety of the public. Of course, you probably know this already because we covered it here in Breaking Space, but still worth noting as we break down the space traffic of the week. Thankfully, the launch occurred the next day without a hitch, and we were able to see booster B-1081 returning back to Earth for a 16th time, landing at SpaceX's landing zone 4. 
To wrap up the week, we had the launch of a Soyuz 2.1B from Vistachny, carrying a multi-payload mission. Liftoff took place on July 25th at 5.54 UTC from Site 1S at the Vistachny Cosmodrome in Russia. The rocket was carrying two Ionosfera M satellites and 18 other rideshares into sun-synchronous orbit. These were the third and fourth Ionosfera M satellites to be launched following the launch of the first pair in November of last year. This constellation of four satellites is set to measure the Earth's ionosphere and magnetosphere sphere with an array of eight instruments, which includes four different types of spectrometers, as well as particle detectors and magnetometers. Along for the ride were 18 different satellites, with one of them being an experimental Iranian communications satellite. Going into next week, we'll have a week packed with activity. For starters, we've got up to four Starlink missions, two from Florida and two from Vandenberg. On top of that, we've got the fifth flight of the European Vega C rocket from French Guiana. The mission, set to launch as soon as this weekend, will be carrying two missions in one single launch for CNES, the French space agency. One of the missions, the Constellation Optique in 3D, also known as CO3D, consists of four Earth observation satellites, which will map Earth's surface in great detail in order to create 3D maps of the globe. The other mission is a single small satellite riding along called MicroCarb and is set to map where carbon dioxide is created and absorbed on Earth at a global scale. Next week on July 30th, we're also expecting the launch of a GSLV Mark II from India carrying the NISAR spacecraft. NISAR, which stands for NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar, is an Earth observation satellite born of a collaboration between the American and Indian space agencies. Several of the satellite systems have been provided by NASA, while ISRO is the one launching the mission and provided the satellite bus as well as some of the instruments. Next week, we're also hoping to see Australian company Gilmore Space finally attempting its maiden launch of its Eris rocket, which had to be delayed from a July 16th debut to July 26th. Let's hope that this one is the final attempt. And it's not just Starlinks that SpaceX will be launching next week, as the company is also aiming to fly its next human spaceflight mission, Crew-11. The mission is currently set to launch no earlier than July 31st at 16.09 UTC from Launch Complex 39A in Florida. It'll be SpaceX's 11th crew rotation mission to the International Space Station and will feature the sixth flight of Crew Dragon Endeavor the most flights of any Dragon capsule to date. Teams are currently preparing the launch pad and hardware for that mission. The transporter erector at LC-39A rolled back to the hangar this Thursday, and Endeavour was transported for mating to its rocket. NASA astronauts Zena Cardman and Michael Fink will serve as commander and pilot for this mission. Both of them will be accompanied by mission specialist and JAXA astronaut Kimia Yui and mission specialist and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platinov. Next week, we may also have a few launches from China, including the return to flight for the Hyperbola-1 rocket, as well as the launch of another batch of Guowang internet satellites. There's also the potential for the launch of a haste mission from Wallops, Virginia, carrying a secretive hypersonic payload. As always, a lot of these dates and missions can change over time, so we recommend that you check nextspaceflight.com for the latest updates or download the app to your phone.